so in this video we start with the concept of automorphism so we go directly to the definition of what a automorphism is an isomorphism from a group G onto itself is called an automorphism of G we have been working around the, the concept of isomorphism we saw that an isomorphism is a map from G to uh, a, from a group G to a group G bar where phi of A operation B operation of this one so this one G with this operation and G bar with operation prime where um, phi operation B so this will be a homomorphism right it will be phi of A operation operation prime of course op operation prime phi of b phi of a operation b equals phi of a operation prime phi of b so we have to have all these four isomorphisms we have to have a mapping we have the this mapping has to be injective so one to one or injective three it has to be onto or subjective uh, and it has to be operation preserving okay so this is an isomorphism so an isomorphism from a group G onto itself so if we have G uh, uh, if we have phi from G to G this is called an automorphism. So the function, and this will be the first example. Phi, a mapping from C, from the complex numbers into the complex numbers, given by phi of A plus BI equals A minus BI this is an automorphism well this is phi is taking the group of the complex numbers under addition to the group of to itself to the group of complex numbers under addition okay so this phi here is clearly a automorphism So, phi is isomorphic from the group onto itself. Um, uh, I think if we uh, if we take c under multiplication, but here we have to take the zeros out okay so the non-zero complex numbers into the non-zero complex numbers under multiplication this will be an automorphism too a second example would be a second example so in R2 the set where A B such that A and B are in R2 this mapping phi of A B equals B A this is a automorphism because it takes it's an isomorphism that takes R2 into R2 
um, under oh yes R2 to R2 under component addition if we add components okay so geometrically phi is going to reflect each point in the plane so if we have the Cartesian plane and if this is point A B so A B phi of A B phi of this point is going to be the point B A um, let us imagine for instance the point 1 2 like this is 1 and here this is 2 so this is point 1 2 okay so what would the point phi of 1 2 be it would be the point 2 1 so it would be here 2 and 1 okay that would be the point 2 1 so geometrically phi reflects each point um, in the plane um, across the y equals x around this line here okay so this will be clearly a reflection around this okay so we can also say that any reflection um, across a line well any reflection across a line that uh, goes through the origin or any rotation of the, pla the plane about the origin around the origin is an automorphism of uh, R2 so we get directly into another concept we define now what an inner automorphism is an inner automorphism induced by A let G be a group and let A be in G so we have G and an operation okay G is here and we have A here let G be a group and let A be in G. The function phi A defined by phi A of x A inverse times x times A for all x in G is called the inner automorphism of G induced by A. So phi of AX means any element X that is in G we will have A A inverse and this operation A inverse X A this is the inner automorphism of G induced by induced by A by this A so our example for the inner automorphism induced by an element is going to be we are going to pick d4 the dihedral group and we are going to show the action of the inner automorphism of d4 induced by the rotation of 90 degrees i'm going to use this notation here okay so we will have x element x and we will have so since the inner automorphism of G induced by A is phi A of x A inverse times x times A so on the dihedral group um, a is going to be the right rotation of 90 degrees so phi of the rotation of 90 degrees on 
every single element x is going to be the in the rotation of nine, 90 degrees in the inverse sense times x times the rotation of 90 degrees okay so x we will we will have an action here on rotation 90 degrees the inverse rotation and we have to have a rotation of uh, a rotation of 90 degrees here so where the elements are the zero rotation the 90 degrees rotation the 180 degrees rotation the 270 degrees rotation the horizontal rotation right um, so this will be this one right where this one comes here and this one goes there this one comes here and this one goes there right that's the horizontal rotation and the vertical rotation meaning this one where this one swapped with this one okay the vertical rotation and the diagonals rotation okay for both okay now we do this rotation times uh, x element x times right times the uh, rotation of 90 degrees so x um, so this this should so x should be r0 here right this is rotation of 90 degrees so this should be rotation 0 rotation 0 times rotation 90 degrees we get um, rotation 90 degrees right that's the identity times rotation 90 90 90 we get um, a rotation of 90 degrees too you can check all this okay 180 times 90 that's rotation of 180 degrees too here is a rotation of seven it's really easy this and horizontal times rotation of 90 degrees uh, uh, that's the vertical right right this one horizontal d gets d prime and d prime gets d okay so this is the action of the inner automorphism of d4 induced by the rotation of 90 degrees okay the inner automorphism of g induced by a so here is the inner automorphism in this case and d4 is the inner automorphism of g induced by the rotation of 90 degrees so that will be a here is going to be the rotation of 90 degrees of x a inverse times a inverse times x times a here will be inverse rotation times x times rotation and we get this table for the action of the inner automorphism of d4 induced by the 90 degree rotation